Hello hackers, my name is Jan, you're watching Pwn College and today we're talking about um, memory disclosures, a special class of memory errors which um, we'll talk about in the context of all of the defenses that we just discussed. We just discussed stack canaries, we just discussed address space randomization, and the core of all of these things is secrets. A stack canary is a secret value that is written to the stack before a function runs and is checked after the function runs. And the idea is that it's a secret value. So the attacker, if they can overwrite the stack, don't know this secret value. And when they override the stack, they will override it with something else. Likewise, address space data randomization is a secret value or a set of secret values at which um, program assets like uh, code and data are laid out in memory. The security of ASLR depends on the attacker not knowing those offsets. So if there's a way to get at um, these offsets, then this is a big problem. So we're gonna talk about um, memory errors uh, today that lead to these disclosures. All right, let's roll. The first one is super easy. Buffer overreads, conceptually it's uh, the read version of a buffer overflow. Instead of a large write, we have a large read. Of course, this can also occur if you have a large copy somewhere else that the attacker can then um, have printed out to them, etc. This is the very smallest um, example where we have a small buffer and then we write out that buffer. All right, let's take a look at how um, it works and what is written. So I created this buffer over read dot C and it's exactly what we saw there. Um, let's compile it. Okay, we run it. And it prints out a bunch of garbage, as expected, right? Let's take a look at what is printed out. Um, first of all, immediately you can see the, the, the 16 bytes of this small buffer already have stuff in it. This is actually looking ahead. Whoa, not that. Looking ahead, that's also looking ahead. Um, buffer over read that C. Let's initialize it properly to null bytes. All right, let's let's take a look at what leaked. Okay, so here's our our, our buffer, our 16 bytes of, of buffer, and then there's another 112 bytes of garbage that's printed. But this garbage is far from useless. There's an address here. So we have just broken ASLR. Um, there, this looks like a stack canary. Uh, starts with a null byte and then a bunch of other stuff that if I run again, we can see randomizes every time. We just leave the stack canary. Um, this looks like an offset somewhere else. So I'm guessing this is a stack offset. Um, and this is a uh, library function offset maybe, or, or, or vice versa, probably vice versa. Um, this is probably, but somewhere on the stack. Now nah, I'm going to go with my initial assessment, but you can see we are leaking a lot of data from an overread. And then if we had both an overread and an overwrite, um, then, uh, we could leak out that, um, leak out the stack in area and then when we do the overwrite, write it with the correct value um, so that the stack canary check passes. Or when we do the overwrite, we write the correct address so that despite ASLR, we can uh, function properly. Okay. And of course, I mean, uh, the, the question of wh where does this point and so forth, we can understand by stepping through in GDB and seeing where this data comes from to understand the program. All right. Next problem, um, string termination. String termination is a giant headache. Um, strings do not have explicit size metadata in C, like many other things. Um, and so uh, the C developers in their uh, infinite wisdom decided, okay, well, this is an easy thing to, f to, to, to solve, an easy problem to solve, rather than passing around the size, which takes up uh, space in memory, and then you have to track the size and so forth, we'll just, allow strings to be buffers of bytes 
And at the end of that buffer, there's a null byte. And wherever the null byte is, we'll assume it's null terminated. So this leads to problems. One is it's very easy with a uh, string operation to um, uh, cause overflows, right? And we talked about this in a, in a uh, previous uh, video in this module, but it's also very easy to cause memory disclosures, which the program listed here does. This program is pretty simple. It reads a flag and then it reads my name and then it says, hello name, right? This program shouldn't print me the flag, but I will show you that it will print me the flag. All right, so let's take a look. Here's the program. Um, all right, nice and simple. So what it, it, it initializes this to, to zero, the name buffer, then it reads into it, then it prints hello name. And as a side, as, a, as an aside, before it all does all this, it reads in the flag. Um, so let's, um, let's compile it. Uh, let's run it. Oh, it, that's annoying. Okay. It, uh, let me, let me just, let's change this to have a new line so that it flushes this buffer, compile it. What's going on? Well, compile it, run it. Okay, what's my name? My name is Jan, hello Jan. And, okay, it's it's a little lazy, it, it, it got the new line, all right? But the interesting thing here is that this array is size t uh, a size 10. And then there's a size 64 array here. But I will read in 10 bytes. So where's the null byte going to go? This is a, a very uh, analogous thing, a little bit, uh, a lot of sh these termination issues are analogous to off by one errors because if I had read nine, I'd still have one of the initial 10 null bytes. But since I read 10, I can give it a bunch of A's. And here is what it prints. It's hello, A, 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 A. And of course, percent S, when it's printing out, it says, okay, print F is gonna print a string here. Right, right here it says print a string pointed to by name. There's no size metadata other other than just keep printing until you find a null byte. And the problem is, I eliminated all the null bytes. I overrode them with this input, and so it says, okay, hello, and then it prints ten A's: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then it keeps printing because it hasn't found a null byte. And next to my name on the stack is this next buffer. That's the flag. And suddenly I've leaked the flag. But in the same way, I've, I've leaked some other stuff too, by the way. Um, let's see what I've leaked. Pipe it to HD. I have leaked... right here, what looks like a pointer somewhere, this. Uh, no, 30, 880, no, this, yeah. So I've leaked something that looks like a pointer and then this exclamation point new line is the end of the thing. So you can also leak memory addresses as long as they don't have a zero inside them, which is super cool. Um, one uh, word of caution, you might immediately think, ooh, 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 I can leak the canary. That is not the case. The canary designers thought of this. If you look at our buffer overread example, because that's an easy way to print a canary, look at this canary. The canary starts with a null byte, exactly for this purpose, exactly so that using a string termination issue, 
leading to a memory disclosure, you cannot uh, leak out the canary. That's how common these types of issues are. That the, a canary, an entire bite of a canary, was given over to stop these runaway string operations. All right, last one, uninitialized data. This is a giant class of vulnerability on all, all by itself. Recall, as I said um, in the beginning of this module, C will not clean up after you. You have to clean up after yourself. C is extremely low level. It will do exactly what you tell it to do. And that includes the stack. When you deallocate a stack frame, no data is destroyed. All you do is change the value of the stack pointer and the frame pointer. The old data is there. So what happens here? We have a main that calls foo and then calls bar. In foo, it allocates a 64 byte buffer and reads the flag into it. And in bar, it writes that buffer out. There's no overreads. Everything is legit. Problem is that um, uh, the flag is still in memory. So here's what's going on. So here is uh, the uninitialized dot C, that exact program. Let's compile it, run it, the flag, and a bunch of other garbage that 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 happened to be on the stack. Um, that wasn't overridden by the read of this of this uh, of the flag. Um, again, the stack is a mess. If you want to be very sure that you don't have an uninitialized data, initialize it. If you want to be very sure that you are not leaving around secrets on the stacks on on uh, in memory, such as the flag, explicitly erase them. Um, this also applies, by the way, to dynamic memory allocation. When you free something, that data mostly stays in memory. If you malloc, use something, and then free it, that data stays around. And we'll cover that uh, in much more detail in the um, uh, dynamic allocator misuse module. I'll mention one more thing. Even if you try to be a careful person and you realize that, hey, this flag I read is sensitive and I should remove it. Here, uh, this code is using memset. Memset, why does this work? Okay. Memset will fill a memory with a constant byte. It will location S with byte C um, for N bytes. Okay. Let's take a look at what this does. This should read in the flag wipe it from memory and then call bar, right? And then write out that buffer, which now should be all zeroed out from that mem set. Let's take a look at what actually happens, right? So I implemented this in uninitialized safe. Here it is. Here's the mem set. So let's compile it. Let's run it. Nothing. If you hex dump, all zeros. 64 bytes of zeros. You can see this star with the hex 40. Hex 40 is 64. Um, it's all zeros. Awesome. Did we solve the problem? Not really. Um, this is actually a huge um, problem in crypto implementations. A compiler that is run with optimizations, which typically when you compile code to ship, you enable compiler optimization so that your code runs a lot faster. We'll decide that, hey, this mem set, it's pointless. Why is it pointless? Because this is a local variable and it's not used after this mem set. The compiler isn't gonna realize that this is occupying the same memory space as this. It's just gonna see, okay, why are they making costly operations, memory writes, and all of this crap to a variable that's never going to be used. Let's just remove it. Let me show you this. Let's get back our, uh, okay. And let's enable optimizations. This is a high level of optimizations. I have to disable one optimization because not that it breaks this fundamentally, 
but it uh, inlines functions and, and disaligns the stack. So it's harder to demonstrate. Compile it with these optimizations and run it. And there's our flag again. Why? Because GCC took out the call to memset. We can see it without the op uh, optimizations. If we object dump and we look in main or in foo, we see the call to memset. If we look at optimizations turned on and we look at foo, no memset call. I see a lot of other weird stuff being done, but no memset call. So it optimized a bunch of stuff away. And at the end of the day, it optimized away the security. This actually happens a lot. It's a real vulnerability class in crypto implementations that lead to key disclosures. Um, so when you're writing code, be careful about that. The correct fix here, of course, is to initialize this buffer to zero uh, at the start of the program. So you should all at the start of the function. So you should always initialize variables in your code before they are used. Awesome. That um, is it for uh, the data disclosure vulnerabilities we'll talk about here. Of course, there are arbitrarily complex ones. You could overwrite point or pointers that are then used as a read, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but these are uh, some simple ones to get you started. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed memory errors and um, good luck on the challenge problems.